Very interesting stuff. We have uh, Chucky here joining us at the caster's bench. Um, now we got to see a little bit more of Double O's. Um, you know, he, he has played on the ESL series. That's why he's here, of course. But, uh, you know, the world gets to see a little bit more of the uh, better Hearthstone players out there. Though I, I, I have to root for uh, my boy Oskaka. What do you think? Yeah, I'm pretty good friends with Oskaka. I'm cheering for him in this match. I do think Double O's, though, is kind of one of the bigger underdog stories of the tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, like you, like we've talked about, not a lot of people know about him. Uh, he says that he's been grinding tournaments for a while, and this is pretty much his big first breakthrough. So, really wanting to prove something here. Well, each player bringing one of the two Hunter or Grim Patron options. Um, Oskaka not choosing to go with Hunter. What do you think about that? Yeah, I actually talked to Oskaka a bit about his deck choices, and he picked Rogue over Hunter, I believe. And he thinks that Rogue and Hunter were close for third place. So he actually values his other two decks above that. I one believe of it which a warlock? is a Warlock deck. Okay. Which I, I won't disclose what Warlock deck it is yet, but I'm, we'll probably get to see it. And the other one is indeed Grim Patron Warrior. Whoa! Whoa, feign death. <laughs> okay. Whoa, yeah. That is a crazy tech so, card. Now, I actually have some experience with Fain Death Hunter. Me too. Yeah. The problem with it is you kind of need multiple creatures out at the same time, which usually as a hunter is a situation you have already won it's, in. Uh, yeah. It's worst matchup if he's running like a really slow deck is Rogue. Yeah. yeah. That because is actually the worst matchup. Rogue wins the game by not letting you have anything. Great. Right. They just kill exactly. everything. Yeah. yeah. The pleasure is mine. And there is a sap in Oskaka's hand. So if this is truly a really slow hunter deck, he will struggle. The rogue can kind of fall on, fall apart on its own sometimes. Yeah. If you get like a really weak draw, no draw cards. Yeah, too many like half combos and no draws. Yep. Yeah. Double prep is usually one of the draws that can fall apart. Yeah, or double backstab. Just anything that costs zero. Like, yeah. you know you're in a bad spot if you can play your entire hand by like turn three. It's happened to you a lot, Firebat. Yeah, I play a lot of rogue. It's my favorite class and uh, that's just one of the downsides of it. Yeah. It, judging by how slow the hunter deck is, I think he definitely freezing trap here. Double O is definitely kind of just <laughs> I mean, waiting around I like a bit. Go from the web spinner to each of the cards to the catapult. Yeah, got to load the catapult for yeah. later. I like not, the not launch freezing trap here. We saw that play earlier done by Kabi, and it sort of bluffed snakes, and it made uh, the rogue opponent coin SI instead of just daggering yeah. down the web spinner. Mm -hmm. I, I Which, don't think this is as big of a bluff this time as it is just this is kind it's of a tough play. decision. Well, since he wants to bow next turn, and yeah. hopefully he draws into a four, yeah. and he's going to Beltron five, he's basically realizing he probably won't have time for this mm -hmm. Freezing Trap. And but his his deck isn't as based on damage from the hero power. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I feel being a, the bad matchup that it is, maybe it has to become that. If this is a mind game, basically the mind game is, as Oskaka said, he knows nothing about double O's. Yeah. Can you... Can you really or maybe read even your opponent? Death Hunter. Can you read your opponent and say like, does he have Snake Trap? Like, would he be that type of person? We haven't yeah. seen a single Snake Trap all tournament. Yeah. Very unpopular choice. Is a decent card though. Yeah. When, when you get them with it, mm -hmm. with the surprise, insanely powerful. Uh, similar to Misdirect, but it's uh, less chance to be completely useless. But Oskaka. Yeah, Oskaka is a very mathematical player, and. He's going to take chances like that where the odds are in his favor there. Tyro Falfa is pretty good at Unleash, by the way. It is. Yeah, it's not bad. It's but like second to Juggler. How often does Rogue build a board? Unless they're running Violet Teacher, they're mm. probably not going to have more than two minions out on the board at all times. Mm. Unleash. Oh. Mm. I wonder if Unleash is playable. Is it playable at zero creatures? No. No. I thought it was. No, it's not. Oh, it was I before. Play, I played a lot point. of Hunter. Yeah, it was before it got oh, nerfed. They, they nerfed it to make yeah. it so you can't play it. You it can't is, it is a nerf. You can't buff some, your mana in some addict. situations. Yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. buff your mana addict off Shredder. Or you or might have... Pyromancer. I didn't get lethal from that yeah. once. I was but mad. You, like playing Fain Death Hunter, you may have Sylvanas a Flame Waker. <laughs> oh, crazy. Crazy stuff. Mm. Blizzard, please. <laughs> So both players very much taking their time. Don't, yeah. don't want to like give away that 
because if we look at Double Ose's hand, every single play he's made is like extremely obvious. Yes, but yes, yes. he wants to kind of make it seem like, you know, he's got all the options in the world. And there's a turn four shredder. It's a really good. However, draw here. Since he attacked the face with the bow, he can't bow off this three three really without giving up his entire bow. But That's does, okay, though. Does he want to? Maybe he just like wants a, to let he it could get frozen. Five yeah, mana yeah. size, okay. Right, that's what I'm saying. He basically is committed to freezing it right now, um, which is fine. But it, I mean, really, the outcome of the, the following turns is going to be what comes out of the Shredder, because the, the Shredder is going to die to the spell damage backstab. And if Oskaka is able to kill what comes out with his dagger, with his dagger that'd that's be a huge. really big deal. Yeah. yeah. Pretty rare you get a one health off of Shredder. I don't think it's that rare. Uh, there's like That's Blue Gill Warrior. There's, there's like, like one in five one. or so. It's one in five? Be less than one in five. Uh, yeah, I think it's less than one in five. So we will give up the bow. Wow. Which means he basically lost a charge because he valued the three damage. And mm. it, it almost seems to me like he might be playing around Harrison Jones. Okay. Which we've seen be a very popular tech choice so in far. this yeah. tournament. It's been in most decks so far. But, uh, he's going to go for the Drake. Yeah. And there's the double prep hand we talked about, where with two mana spells, prep is not very And uh, Mini bot is rough. That's not a one health. Yeah. But he's going to have a nice flurry coming up. Wow, another shutter. That's pretty good. I think you do just Belcher here, though, just for... I don't think there's any other so. option. I'm yeah. just looking at the board there. Yeah. You really want to stick close. to your mana yeah. with this deck. Yeah, it's Hunter. Mm. Generally, you play all your mana, and then you hit them uh, in the face, right? Yeah, but... Right. The same text... Death Hunter, that, that just, like, very rarely... Well, right. But it's still the same concept of... You just have a few more tricks of, like, Sylvanas or... I think the main trick is that you are playing <laughs> Fade Death Hunter. That, that is, is a little tricky. strange. Yeah. I mean, it's at this stage, just Kaka might be okay. Belcher, that's kind of interesting. But like, you yeah. know, if until Sylvanas comes down, you really don't know what's yeah, going even on. Sylvanas, even Sylvanas, you're like, there's he's probably not playing. It's like that. a tech choice kind okay. of. You're just yeah. like, okay, very con very slow hunter. The thing is, like, if you're playing Feigned Hunter, you play Sylvanas and it's alive yeah, for yeah. one turn, things goes really badly <laughs> for your opponent suddenly. Um, yeah. I think the. If he was playing something like Sneed's old Shredder, that would definitely give it away. But, yeah. <laughs> um, it's I mean, interesting, though, because, like, this, the Fane Death Hunter, as the tournament goes on, is going to lose value. Right. Like, Considerably. Um, if immediately. He... <laughs> like, next match is going to be yeah. way worse. Yeah. Right. No one's made the decision that Fane Death Hunter was just stronger mm -hmm. overall, like, it's the best version. No one has made that decision, so I have to. Assume the double O's basically decided he wanted a bit of a surprise factor. I also think that people have generally decided that Hunter, You're right. just being Hunter, there is, is pretty good. There is pretty merit good. in just yeah. having the Hunter class. It's a very aggressive class no matter what cards you put in it, and it's got just naturally good matchups. I don't like the attack here. I guess he's trying to proc the trap before the second bow comes out because the way he used the bow, he assumes he probably has another one. That kind of oh, makes sense. Okay. Um, I don't like it if he has maybe a Saucy Deckhand in his deck, but we we can't know that quite yet. Maybe you have some options. Oh, yeah. guess not. Well, Sylvanas is weak to just clear, and it's also a little weak to sap. So something like Shredder, Shredder Hero, Hero Power, Power gets yeah. the I damage was, in. I was thinking Shredder Direwolf, but I guess Direwolf is really good with Unleash, but then we talked about Unleash just not very good overall. Yeah. yeah, I think Shredder Direwolf's a little weak to like a Blade Flurry. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. sort of an overcommitment. Right. Yeah, and the yeah. hero power, just getting the two damage in, is quite worth it's, it now. It's basically equivalent to the Direwolf damage. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, your opponent's already down to sixteen. You got Unleash and Kill Command in hand. You might not even get need to show that you're Fain Death Hunter. <laughs> and again, Oskaka not. But that wouldn't matter well. because if if you win, you yeah, don't yeah. have to play it again. Yeah, anyway. and, his opponents and your opponents absolutely saw. know what you're playing yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, it's kind of funny. You bring all these crazy tech cards, and then you just win because you're Hunter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just playing Bas those Basically cards. back to Hunter. Yeah. Back to the basics. Actually, the funny thing is, when I first started playing Hearthstone, I, I was just playing the base decks. 
I'm like, I'll, I'll leave the deck building to other people for the first week. Mm -hmm. And the base hunter deck just beat everyone. <laughs> yeah. It's the best Those base deck. Blood Fen Raptors, man. Yeah. Two damage adds up after a while. Oh, Back hello. Jungler. That's yeah, a good you have one. You to deadly that off. Or you could, you could oil. But... He's been re getting really good shredders. Yeah. Minibot and Knife Juggler. Yep. Not bad. Both and a good average. web spinner, too. <laughs> Yeah, and Oskaka's sitting here with both these preps, unable to really interact yeah. with them. Huffer? This would be a great Huffer. This yeah. would be the best Huffer. Nope. No. We've seen a lot of Mishas today. I think it's still like the Dire Doggy. It's just mana yeah. efficient. It's not going to be that useful later on. Yeah, he's going to have uh, Unleash to proc the Kill Command. Because your opponent has to play Minion sometime. Yeah. And I think you're going to see the Azure Drake hit the board again this turn. You think so? Yeah, he's got to draw another card. Yeah. Oh, well, that's a good card to get. Yeah, that one. That's a good one. So, this is basically the start of the comeback. For do you the consider road. burning your dagger charge? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At you this point, oil. you're not attacking into a creature ever. Yeah, yeah. he has, he has two. Uh, he really wants to oil pretty soon. Mm -hmm. And at this point, you're also racing because, oh, wow. That's Lothab's a really a good, good draw. draw. Yeah. <laughs> Rogues can't really interact with Lothab too well, and you get a squeeze in another yeah. hero power and wait a turn. Yeah, but has to be the play. You, you have to hero power. Like, whatever you do, you have to hero power this turn. Right. Yeah. Because the next turn you can do... Uh, you can almost set up lethal, basically. Yeah. Actually, it's a 10 mana. Especially do, with the Lothab. Nine. Like, yeah, you can't not do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, But double O sees it, so easy play. Well, you can do a 7 mana sap here. Yeah, now that's like... <laughs> well, <you> laugh, <laughs> but what else is there? Yeah. You know, I mean, do you fan and trade? Yeah, I think yeah. probably the I think play. fan and trade is That's the play. That's what you gotta do. Yep. It is depressing. Mm. Yeah. I'm not a fan of that play. Double O says, Double O says seven in hand. And he's just gonna like play Sylvanas hero power, put him to seven. And Askaka has to deal with Sylvanas and draw a heal. So yeah, he's gonna make that play. You a fan of that draw? <laughs> oh wow, uh, this game is just so over. Yeah, Doctor Boom's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When you play uh, Doctor Boom on an empty board as a hunter player while knocking your opponent Fain down box. Yeah. to seven, and here comes yeah. a fan and I've suicide turn. Yeah, That's pretty good. That's what's happening. I mean, if you're a fan of suicide. Pretty fantastic. Whoa! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> all right. Well, hmm. all options are absolutely terrible. Yeah. And I think all options include Sap Doctor Boom, which is absolutely terrible. Yeah, I mean, the main issue for Oskaka here is you don't have a winning line. Like, there's not even a chance, really, because how do you deal 21? I think you have to Fan and Ives develop the hmm. Blood Mage after Fan and Ives, so you and can prep so oil. you can yeah, and then yeah. do the oil. So you have to take one from each boom bot. Something yeah. like that. Well, I mean that's pretty realistic. Like you have to go for like the most optimistic play you can think of. Yeah. And this worked out pretty well for him. I mean we know he's dead, but yeah, he probably knows he's dead too. Yeah, of course. Even just replaying Dr. Boom yeah. with one. He can't deal with Dr. Boom Boom Bats again. This seems like a pretty good hunter deck. I think it might even just be one feign death. Yeah. yeah. And no sneed shenanigans, just puts right. it basically hybrid style. He just kind yeah. of put one feign death in as like a surprise. And then just the Sylvanas. Yeah. It works yeah. really well with the Sylvanas as kind of a, a gotcha. Yeah. I mean, I like it. As. Yeah. As a player, you can't really respect that too much. I mean, if it's one copy of each card in a in a hunter match, like you have to worry about dying, yeah. not getting mind controlled. So. Yeah, yeah, from faint at Sylvanas yeah. or something crazy. Uh, but still, very very strong stuff. Um, I think Double O's normally played well, but I think he did a very nice job on the mind games. Very nice job on easing into the game. You know, right. Yeah. He played really slow, which is good. good. A lot of new players tend to get in there, and they're really jumpy, yeah. and they yeah. go really quick. He was slowed down. He seemed really calm. He took a lot of time on turns. Like, he had one play, and he still mm -hmm. took 
quite a bit of time just to do that one play just to relax. On the subject, there's, there's even level worse than that. There's the, you know, you choreograph every single play you're about yeah. to make. We don't see that in tournaments much these days. It used to be, though. It used to it be. It used to be, yeah. yeah. Well, we're going to get into the next game here in just a second. Uh, Oskaka dropping the rogue match. I guess we can expect him to keep keep the uh, rogue. No, no. I think he'll roll a die. So I'd say. You think so? He's that kind of guy. Like yeah. That. yeah, he's that kind of guy. He's the okay. dice guy. Rogue. Uh, no, well, rogue. who's the one out of three? I'd yeah. say actually. <laughs> um, against Druid, that seems relatively even, though, doesn't it? No. No. Rogue crushes Druid. They're going to need like the Dream Start or something to really seal it out. I or feel like, a like on curve. yeah, but if, if, if the Druid gets the Dream Start or if the Rogue just gets a bad hand. Right, yeah. but Dream Start and bad I think, hand I think don't those make two, up yeah, those 50%. Right. I don't think it's 50 50. No, though. I'm saying they don't make up Yeah, 50%. they don't make 50%. It makes maybe like 40%. Mm -hmm. but. Yeah. I feel very, very comfortable as the Rogue as long as I eventually draw Blade Flurry and my hand isn't just yeah. double Blade Flurry, I guess, in the right. beginning. Because Blade Flurry is really, really, really effective against Druid minions, just clearing a whole board of six health minions, basically. Now, yeah. going back to Oskaka's what? original week in ESL, he went 0 and 6, actually. He won in the Redemption Tournament. Mm -hmm. And one of the 0 and 3 matches was all rogue matches where he drew just terrible and got Lothabd on 5 every game. Yep. Yeah, that's so, happened to me before. I know what that's Maybe like. some flashbacks like in, this in his just, mind right now. I feel like Druid just having wild growth is going to do fine. Yeah, Druid having Wild Growth brings the percentage up a bit, but I still think it's Rogue favored. Even with Wild Growth Even start? with Wild Growth? Well, we can see it's probably a, a more taunt-heavy Druid as well. well. Unless that's just the surprise factor. Maybe it's like <laughs> the, one the, the Fane war, Death is yeah, just normal maybe. Druid and there's just one Ancient War chilling. What can you play around? Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll see how it pans out. Wild Growth definitely going to help the Druid. Seems like uh, the, Rogue the one the of coin, right though. now. We see the Shade of Nax in the Savage Drawer does, um, does seem to indicate it's still a fairly standard Druid list. Mm -hmm. Right. There's that Blade Flurry, but with a Sprint. Yeah. Job sprint done. basically guarantees that as long as he lives for a while, he's not just going to draw dead like last game. Mm -hmm. It right. looks pretty bad right now, though, doesn't it? Um, you have quite a bit of time. Yeah. As long as he hits a 4-drop, he's totally fine. Yeah. The best cards against uh, Druid would be like Violet Teacher if he runs it, or Shredder, and then just like prep. Because if you're able to get any sort of like four drop prep sap sort of play going, mm -hmm. it's usually just game over because you can ride off that tempo for the rest of the match. Well, right now it's nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the Rogue Hero Power is one of the better ones when you have nothing to do. Yeah. Like, daggering up on two is extremely standard, so. Earthen Ring into Shredder into Lothab is not, not a bad nearly hurt. as bad as the Druid here power. Do you think the um, the Earthen Ring is better than the Shredder here? Well, if you do the Shredder now, then what are you doing next turn? The Earthen Ring? Yeah. Doesn't that feel a little weird? It does, but I feel if you play the Shredder, it might actually like warrant out the attack, perhaps. Um. Eh. Well, no. we we know it just warrant out a wrath. Yeah. Yeah. But. Yeah, your opponent's definitely not trading into your Farseer ever. The point's very powerful. I don't feel like just pushing out the Shredder a turn earlier than to fall back on the play you were going to do anyway. Oh, Double O's drawn pretty well here. Yeah, he's definitely going to play on curve with that Druid, I think. It's not worth Wrath here powering. Yeah. Just pawn up the Druid yeah. of the Claw. Yep. Wrath's one of those cards where you just try and like fit it in when you don't have anything else to do, really. Mm. Yeah. Wonder. Definitely fine later in the game too against Rogue because you always want to keep their board clear. Ooh. Mm. Pressure of the Earthen Ring is too much. It's a defensive play. Yeah. And we've noticed this from quite a few of the like newer players. They'd rather play around stuff than. Well, what what is he playing around? Yeah, I mean that's kind of the thing. Well, Blade Flurry, Deadly Poison, Blade Flurry. Right. If he taunts up the Druid of the Claw. Right. Um. Also, something like a prep oil blade flurry even would leave him with a 6-3, clear his board, he'd take 10. Yeah. So it's a scary prospect how do you, to just leave like, rogue minions up. Yeah, but how do you always play around a weapon buff and blade flurry? Right. Like, it, you gotta go for it. Yeah, exactly. But and yeah. I would have liked to see him go for yeah. it right then, because... But he is running uh, Ancient of Wars, so that's like, something what? to note. Maybe he's extra defensive because of that. Well, the thing that I'm 
that I'm thinking about is that the mm. main thing to play oh. around is like a sap. But if you if you get a druid of the claw sap, then your seven drop might actually stick. Yep. Yeah. So you I, should. You're happy getting. Yeah. Your five yeah. drop sapped when you play ancient war. I'm not disagreeing with you. Okay. I'm just trying to say like maybe that's what he's thinking. Mm -hmm. Right. What do you think about Harrison Jones here? What? Yeah, a lot of people. You can't really be greedy. Harrison Jonesing against Rogue, you have to just sometimes take their two charge, one attack dagger. It sets them two mana behind in tempo. You get two cards, which yeah. is Druid, is really important. The main issue is that um, it just dies the Shredder. Right. Yeah. That's, that's, that's exactly what he's thinking about. And, and so basically the problem with his play last turn, this plays around Deadly Flurry now, which as a matter of fact he has. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, he yeah. can still clear with the... Deadly Flurry Phantom Knives if he wanted to get rid of everything. But. Seems a bit excessive. Yeah, he might go with something like a Sap play because he's not aware hmm. the Double O's plays Ancient Wars. Mm -hmm. I think there's some chance he might uh, do the trade aside now. It looks like, looks like he's setting yeah. up for the Flurry. Yeah. Or going with just an SI? Nope. No, it is Flurry. It's the Flurry. Oh, wow. Yep, so just aggressively taking control of the board. He's got a sap to deal with whatever comes out next. Now uh, Harrison Jones isn't nearly as good. But we might just see, like, Ancient of War here. The main problem with sap is he has nothing to play it with. Yeah, I mean, SI agent is okay. Yeah, this isn't really an ideal situation for, like, lore. Generally, you want to play lore when you're ahead in tempo and out of cards. Yep. And right now, he is behind in tempo and even in cards. So the card advantage doesn't really help what? him unless he gets Innervate or something to help him catch yeah. back up on the board. The ideal turn here would have been if Oscaka still had a dagger, Harrison Wrath. Yeah. But obviously cannot do that. So what do you do? Do you take the risk with Ancient of War or do you draw the cards? Yeah, I think I'd probably just the, throw out the War. I think the card draw turns out to be better, though. Yeah, definitely, since he has the sap. Yeah, his. Because you can't really sap a lore. And he actually doesn't have, like, an eviscerate here. It is going to be the, uh, the SI coming down, though, I believe. Maybe even both of them. You think yeah. so? Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing both of them and putting maybe two damage on the lore and then just swinging face. Face, yep. Putting the pressure on him. It doesn't really have a way to punish you for mm. not doing trades. Yeah. They can't kill three, three health targets. Mm-hmm. Spell power starfall. <laughs> Got him. Yep. But looks like he's gonna go with slightly. He's gonna take the Ooh. trade and then SI. Very defensive. I mean, oh, if yeah. if I was playing this game, I think that's what I would have done. But I kind of like what you guys were saying a bit better. Yeah. Like, right. Yeah, you guys are right. Like there's there's not much a druid can do to come back from that. You could sneak in some damage. I yeah. feel like Definitely. the only thing they could do to punish you is just swing for your face with their ancient lore and then you have to trade in eventually anyway. Or it could have been, you know, a double innervate, double combo. Lethal. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. It happened. <laughs> it's happened before. Sure. But no swipe. Actually, that would have been lethal. <laughs> Makes things awkward that would for have double been, That would have been 31. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's realistic to play around that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. So, most defensive line, I guess, is Belcher Wrath. Hmm, Belcher Wrath, yep. Seems pretty good to me. Now, do you kill Ship's Cannon in fear of South Sea Deckhand? <laughs> nah. <laughs> oh, I'm just gonna get out. So, he's looking to get a swing turn next turn with Ancient War Wrath. No, I feel like if you do this, you just force out the sap. Yeah. Right. Which is that's what he wants. That's the hope. Yeah. yeah. And then next turn, he wants but the Wrath. I don't think that's gonna happen. I think he can just clear with maybe something like backstab, eviscerate, and play a Lothub. That would be really huge for Oskaka here. It would deny the Wrath next turn. Yeah. And it saves his sap. Oh. He'll just go for the sap. Yay. And this is, I think, because he doesn't expect the Ancient of War mm -hmm. from his opponent. Which is a reasonable expectation right. so far. Yeah. He's played mm -hmm. every single typical Druid card so far. Right. There's no way you just call, you know, blindly that your opponent has Ancient of Wars. But here they are. And yet, here they are. Backstab of Eviscerate SI, and you can trade in the 
uh, ship cannon. He has a really good follow-up to this Ancient of War, though. It's the other Ancient of War. Right, yeah. Once you <laughs> know one of the best follow-ups. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, wow, that's wow, excellent. That, that is, is a lot pretty thing. good. Yeah, yeah, he can just lose the ship's cannon here. Yep. He could have done that with the SI as well, but developing the Drake is obviously more mana efficient and gives you uh, more draw. So yeah, now Doubleos basically knows there's no sap, mm -hmm. and he doesn't feel great being yeah. at 12, but but he's not out of it. Right, he can he can have a bit of a swing turn here, or he could just go for a lot of clearing. He can he can clear everything. Yeah, right, he could kill all of it. I think I might like that more. Yeah, I think I like to clear everything. It's, and then you put up taunts. Like you're just you're just not gonna give that much value from swipes. 12 from hand from three cards is. Pretty hard. I think you might even just Wrath here to save the life. Yeah. yeah. I would like that too. Uh, he's really looking to draw Inner Bait. That way he can have a really huge turn with War, Inner Bait, Sludge Belcher. Or War, Inner Bait, Harrison. The, oh. Wow, minions, with the Shredder yeah. here, do you sprint? I think you do. Yeah, you no. develop the minions first. You, you have, have minion, yeah. minion, dagger, and you okay. hit with the dagger. Mm -hmm. Take him to nine, get him really low. Oh, that's right. And then you, you, then you if, sprint. If you really sprint need the sap, sap then, yeah. then you try to sprint to it. You yeah. always do the minions first, okay, and then he's sprint gonna hold last. the dagger. Uh, in, in preparation for maybe another oil, another deadly. Mm -hmm. And there's that inner bait. So cycling ended up paying off. And he could get off potentially a Harrison Jones innervate in ancient in war. That does make it so um, a sprint combo with maybe prep play player is a bit more unlikely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot more unlikely. So Askaka's gonna need a sap and more. Yeah, Edwin is it, no. You definitely just start with sprint. Yeah. Sap being the best draw in the deck. Nope. Um, can get through it and push yeah. three damage to face. He goes really low doing that. Yeah, and you have to be always afraid of the combo on the backlash. Yep. Which, it's interesting to note, Double Os has drawn a lot of cards this game. Still no combo. Yeah, maybe he's only running one copy and that's why he was able to squeeze in the uh, right. Ancient Wars. I think you have to go for it. It's it's. Yeah, you do put some, your opponent to four. Some not so great blade flurry combo or nothing. Yeah, the only unfortunate part is your opponent Harrison Jones survives at a five-one. But it's gonna go for Edwin. It looks like. Yeah, I'm gonna try and make a bigger blade flurry next turn to be able to kill his opponent. Yep. Double Belcher, though. Yeah. That's a lot to that? get through. It's 15, 15, it's, it's 17 damage. Yep, 17. 19 with the Keeper. What? I think it's got to be a Double Belcher. Yeah. And you got to trade. He's still a little bit afraid, because something like Deadly Oil Flurry of this Yeah, you just kill him, him through taunts. Yeah. And, I mean, the chances your opponent got that off of their past five, six draws, well, not too high, but... Definitely a percentage. Definitely a percentage above zero. Yeah. Maybe if, if you make the absolute safest play, I think you're still pretty fine. Like, if you silence yeah. the, the Shredder and play the Belcher and trade your uh, Harrison. Uh, I think you can just double Belcher. Sets up even more taunt. Yeah. I think Double Belcher is fine. And he's probably going to do some trading. Yeah, and you just leave the Shredder as the only minion alive. Yep. So Asakaka will need some help. Oil would have been great. But I don't think Oil would have been enough. Because then the slimes are the issue. Well, you can blade through that whole board with the spell damage. Uh, it would only do... F Four, yeah, and four. then he could. No, no, it would be. He could fan Drake for two. Yeah, Drake, yeah, yeah. prep, so fan would, knives, and then blade three combo. That would basically clear everything. 
Yeah, that's pretty solid. And the second prep's actually a really good draw with that sprint hand. And that's one off. Yeah, one damage off yep. lethal there. He trades in the Shredder and gets Cobalt Geomancer. <laughs> is, is there any way this is lethal? Probably not. No. No. So he's one off lethal here. He's not and even dead to combo though, so he's yeah. in a really good spot now. Suddenly just great spot with that Drake top deck. Oh, and guess now, you lose. Yeah, if you're double O's, you're just out of taunts all of a sudden. Yeah. So mm -hmm. potentially that keeper play last turn to save a taunt. Might have been better. Might have been better to play around the flurry. Hmm. Wow. If you were double O's, you're probably feeling pretty good about this game last turn. Mm -hmm. No, not at all. Not yeah. at all now, yep. That's what like, I was what, saying. What does it actually take to win here, like Doomsayer? Yeah. Uh, even that, your opponent just sprints, the and they're ahead on tempo again. I, must safeguard the yeah, I think he just, he's going to hope he doesn't have three here. damage, which is... Very optimistic. Very ambitious. Yeah, and of course Laskaka does. Of course Laskaka's going to tie it up here. Yeah. No, we get to see what kind of player he is. Is he going to go for the prep sprint first? And just going for exact with the dagger. Uh, he's a very precise player. Right. Which is true, actually. Skaka's like very ma mathematical and stuff. Yeah. It's kind of weird. You learn so much about players seeing how they kill yeah. people. He actually showed me... I always uh, go for the BM. He yeah. showed me how he came to the conclusion that these were the best decks. Mm -hmm. He did research on all of his opponents. Basically did the averages on which decks had the highest win percentages. They were all very close, around like 54, 55%. Okay. And just decided to kind of mix that with what his comfort decks were. He really liked Rogue, and he ended up taking that over Hunter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, usually when, um, like, on the start of a tournament, you know, we talk about, players talk about, it's like, this is the best thing, this is the best thing. And at the end of the tournament, you know, people do the statistics, and, you know, ended up like Shaman or something had the highest win rate. It's like, people brought Shaman to the tournament? It's like, yeah, they did, and did yeah. pretty well. So, um, you know, having an impression about things and actually seeing what the results ended up being. Um, experience has shown that it's always been different. Well, yeah, but you have to factor in also that all the players are teching for what right. they think the best decks are, right. and nobody's teching for Shaman. Right. Like, nobody even has Ever. that on their radar no, at yeah. all. Shaman's... 0% this tournament. So. Yeah. 0%. It's, it's 0 for 3. We're zero gonna for look three. for that to change later today. Mm -hmm. I know there's at least one more Shaman in the tournament, so not all hope is lost. Yeah. Well, the, uh, the scores are tied 1-1. One to one. Both players Kunin and Warlock. Uh, so far what we've seen from Double O's has been some unusual flavor in each deck. Mm -hmm. Right. So let's see what he brings in this one, but we are expecting Handlock from Oskaka. I'd expect Handlock from probably both players. I don't know much about Double O's, but Handlock is tends to be the more preferred yeah. deck in this meta. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm hoping we see Malagos. Malagos would be very interesting. We haven't seen that all tournament. I have and... not yet casted a Malagos Warlock so far, so I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, hoping this it, is the case. It yeah. tends to be favored against Handlock because they can't really, as long as you don't discard your Soulfire with Soulfire, but that's, you know. You have some experience with that. Yeah, that's like an 80% <laughs> chance when you're playing a handlock so variant. Right. So they are both indeed handlock. Handlock or handlock variants. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, I believe is it Oskaka on top? Yes, I believe so. Okay. Now uh, it's always fun to see like a turn one watcher turn two silence the watcher. Does that really give you much of an advantage in this matchup though? No, <laughs> no it's really bad. Basically, what yeah. you're doing is you're just putting a four or five out there that is going to hit them in the face a bunch, and then they're going to play Moltens and kill you. Yeah. Right. So it's not very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Life Coach, who has a lot of experience in this matchup, says you should never owl your watcher. Yeah, owl unless it's, ever? Unless it's a lethal. Like, unless okay. it's a lethal, never. Yeah, wow. owl just gets so much utility for silencing things like Sylvanas, which is a huge deal in this matchup, or Twilight Drakes, or yeah. silencing taunts to then push for lethal. Yeah, it's interesting Double O's is actually keeping a watcher, and I think that's literally because going second you need something to do on turn three yeah otherwise you overdraw otherwise you overdraw yeah so he's thinking well they're on a watcher uh, he ends up throwing it away looking for something a little bit yeah. better and he got some better stuff yeah now, another thing i know is um 
often the case is you, you very rarely end up coining a drake unless you have another drake. Mm -hmm. Right. It just makes it so it screws up your giants and a lot of other plays in the next few turns. Yeah. Yep. And you always want to get your giant out first because it uh, contests your opponent's drakes usually pretty well. Yeah. Yep. So neither player having big game hunter early on. Power and we do There's see the flavor. flavor. That's yeah. the flavor. Yeah. Power bombing's really, really solid in this matchup. Just any burst at all, really yep. good against handlock. And again, Oskaka doesn't know much about double O's. He's not now, going you, to play around. Usually, this. when you have power bombing, you have like something else that's a bit different, like, like, an, like an arc or a faceless, something yeah. like that. Usually, or both. I have seen. I believe I actually watched Double O's play a match. It was just a show match, and. Yeah. He had power overwhelming, and we got about 25 cards deep. No other combo cards with it. It was just purely wow. to just Shadow Flame, power shadow overwhelming flames. Watcher, or just for that extra damage reach. He goes for the Coin Drake, which is really weird. He does have a big game hunter. Yeah. So he's potentially trying to just like bait out the giant here mm -hmm. and try and take an that. early lead. But I think he was just going to play giant anyway. Yeah. It's it's interesting. It's going to set his mountain giant a little further back, but, but yeah, Boskaka plays giant here, thinking, "Wow, he coined out the Drake, so now it's a four eight. The giant trades favorably with it. He plays the giant. The big game hunter is going to punish that." It is it is kind of that play where you know we talked about how you generally don't do that unless you have another Drake. Well, that's what Boskaka might be assuming. Let's go. Let's get another yeah. Drake. Yeah. Well, it's time to play him. Oh, mountain giant. So just yeah. owling here is actually pretty fine. He's going to go it Owl, Dark punished. Bomb. Yeah. He has to assume his opponent might have a, a Dark Bomb or a Coil. Huh. But he doesn't. There's an Alex Straza, which we haven't seen in a long time in this deck. Wow. That's a fun card. Yeah, Emperor is pretty good, especially with things like Alex Straza and Power of Warming. Yeah. Mostly power bombing because it like power bombing seems to be in the deck for that shadow flame and just makes it so much more dangerous yeah. when it costs even yeah. less. Both of them are going to get reduced. It's going to be three mana to do this shadow flame combo. Shadow flame anything you want to clear your opponent's board. It's crazy. <laughs> so many possibilities. Even even eight mana through Lothab, you can watch her. Uh, you, I guess you can't play the the power overwhelming right. mana, uh, but Oskaka is really afraid of big game hunter. Seems depends, like he sort actually, of depends on how many ticks you get off the uh, Tharson. The Tharson can make a card negative mana, yeah. mm -hmm. and when it gets Lothab, it just costs the same. Sick. Yep. Yeah, double O's full on cards now, so he needs to expend some stuff and try and take board control before this Emperor turn. He knows that Oskak already expended a Dark Bomb, which is one of the better ways to help deal with Emperor. Yeah. Because Handlock doesn't play much direct damage from hand or direct I don't really cancer. like the silence here. Like, you can just contest it as it is. You can silence it later if you want. Yeah. Like, if you get big game, then you just silence Shadow Flame. Yeah, you do want to save your yeah, Shadow, Shadow Flame, though. Flame's late game. For late game, especially with this power overwhelming. Mm -hmm. You're looking to really, as we saw, like, Kit Kats do in the Handlock Mirror yesterday, you. He saved Shadow Flame all the way until it was lethal, because it helps clear just like the Molten Taunt boards. Yeah, Molten Shadow Flame is like one of the strongest plays Handlock can do in the Handlock Mirror. Yeah, I think the main purpose of really getting this Owl out of his hand is so he can continue tapping later. Yeah, because you really want to be constantly tapping to get yourself down into that Molten Giant range. Yeah, you do have to continue to play a bunch of stuff. Oh, he can clear. Yeah. But if you're Oskaka here, you do need to worry about Emperor. So you need to have a board that's threatening uh, enough to be able to clear it next turn. What do you think about just the uh, slamming down Sylvanas? Owl for Owl Sylvanas. You could do that, actually. You've seen one Owl from your opponent. So it's pretty unlikely as a second, though with how kind of aggressively Double O's played that, maybe he does have two Owls. If yeah. you're thinking from Oskaka's seat. It's really hard to read when they play so aggressively like that. And Sylvanas so can also be one of those awesome. power cards late game, especially with Shadow Flame, where instead of letting your opponent have the option of how they want to deal with it, yeah. you just instantly use it for the steal. Mm -hmm. 
What's gonna be fun is if Alistraza and Power Worm both cost a lot less. Muskaka might just surprise die. Yeah, the OTK. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Muskaka decides to just play a giant and go face. Maybe even looking to bait out a Shadow Flame. Yeah, it could be totally reasonable to Shadow Flame this board. I don't like it. Yeah, I don't yeah, like it I don't either. Like it either. But I'm like, I could see it. So yeah. maybe he is trying to bait it. But. I think that might be something that Oscock is thinking. You know, I don't, I don't know much about this guy. Maybe he'd make that play. I don't think it's a good play. Maybe I can just make my opponent make a mistake. Yeah. I know a lot of people think that the handlock mirror uh, is one of the most skill-based mirrors in the game. Shields up. And with the power overwhelming and the Shadow Flame, I agree with Double Lewis pushing for a lot of damage here. That's a decent Hellfire. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> really nice Hellfire. He can't really play anything after, though, besides a watcher. a watcher. Yeah, but what does that really do? Yeah, it doesn't do much. Make your opponent think. Yeah. Think about what? <laughs> think about playing Emperor Thorson. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it makes him think about, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And he'd actually have actually no response. Hmm. So as good as this Hellfire looks, Oscox is definitely thinking, where does it put me in this game? It puts me behind an initiative. Mm -hmm. Well, he's already really behind. Right, he is behind an initiative, so he's looking for a way to regain it. And I think what that tap was for, Hellfire, oh, to see, yeah, see if he got anything better. And he didn't. No. Ragnaros, though, is an answered emperor. That's yeah. what comes down, but it can go horribly wrong if it, it hits face. Yeah, you definitely Emperor here, though. Yep. Not really much else to Empty do. Empty board, a lot of cards in hand. Even after the Ragnaros, even if it hits the Emperor, you can steal it with the Sylvanas Power Overwhelming, potentially. Yeah, but if it doesn't hit the Emperor, you lose. Because yeah. of the Power Overwhelming Sylvanas play. Yep. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking it could go terribly because if it hits the face, you enable Boltons, but... Yep, Actually, that no, would wait, be... the Power of Solanus wouldn't be lethal. Yeah, it wouldn't steal it and It, it wouldn't have it two end-of-turn triggers separately. Yeah, yeah. So he'd have nine damage, he'd need to find four more. So many possibilities. Yeah, stealing rag is a lot worse when it doesn't shoot. Yeah. Wait a second, no, it would be can lethal. You, yeah, because you, you can, can shadow, shadow flame, flame it. it. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Lethal. Yeah, lethal Emperor. Is. Yeah, of yeah. course. Fun stuff. Why wouldn't it be lethal? He Emperored. So Oskaka's in a, a really bad spot. I think he does have to rag. <laughs> Which is terrible. Yeah, that's not that's good. It's really bad. I but is there a better option than this terrible one? Uh, I don't see it. Yeah, I mean... I guess you just slam Ragnaros. It's a 50-50 to not lose. And still be in a bad spot. E even <laughs> even if you're Oskaka and you don't know you're you're dead, mm. you still pretty much know you lose if it hits face. Like your opponent gets two Emperor activations, he kills your Rag somehow, or steals it. Yeah. No, he's found a different line. On another play. Okay. Alright, so he's gonna contest Emperor. Yep. Sets up his own lethal, too. Yeah. Pretty interesting. Seems like the same play is happening. Uh. Tavana's Shadow Flame. Yeah, he only yeah. has 9 damage right now, so not quite lethal. I won. Yeah, if you push this damage, how do you finish your opponent, though? So, like, what would right. be the merits to doing the Sylvanas Shadow Flame? I mean, you get the the Drake, which is cool. Your opponent probably doesn't have Moltens, judging by this play, I guess? Yeah. So maybe right. that's the idea. Like, they don't have Moltens, so let's take this so opportunity to just go hard at them. What's better than the Sylvanas play? I don't see it. Um... Yeah, I mean, he does struggle to deal with this Drake. And doing the Sylvanas play gives you another activation. Do you necessarily need to Shadow Flame it? 
you can power wall and mortal throw or something if you want. I mean, you could just like Sylvanas Belcher too. Oh, I know you can't. Think it. would give you an activation as well, right before it dies. Yeah, that. I yeah, the no Shadow Flame is the only thing. Yep, he's gonna go for that. And now Askaka, once again, in a terrible spot. I do like to play over Ragnaros, though. I mean, we have to yeah. uh, we have to complement that a little bit. Yeah, it it did set up set a up feasible legal. way to win the game. Yeah. Whereas Ragnaros was kind of like you're not winning either way. Right. Yeah. So and it's well, good. it's still that. Yeah. Yeah, Emperor, definitely the MVP of this game. Yeah, well, really hard to deal with Emperor without a board as Hanlock. Yeah, just enabled, you know, Sylvanas Shadow Flame, enabled crazy plays, and made Oskaka bend over backwards just to not die. Thing is, if you can do some some play that doesn't involve Belcher or Healbot, you can do both next turn, so which will kind of give you an option to come back in. Yeah, but there's no other play that lets you live. Yeah. Without those. Oh, there's Ragnaros. Yeah, yeah, but you're dead. We, we know that wouldn't do anything. <laughs> that might still be the play he ends up going with. Yep. Yeah. There he goes. I mean, he's been playing again, to win the whole time. Again, setting up a, you know, very small percent chance to win. Yeah. Oh, and Leroy. There is a Leroy. Oh, and that's, no. That's, that's the actually worst really possible. relevant. Yeah, yeah, he just revealed it to everybody else in the group. Wow. Oh. Okay, guys, I'm playing Handlock. I got Leroy and Power of the Well. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so like you said, they usually do play something with power, and I guess in that show match I saw, he just, he just didn't draw Leroy. Just didn't draw it. Now we know. But it, it is fun. I mean, uh, Double O's is, is ahead again. Yep. And uh, one deck he's, left. he's playing some fun stuff. I, I, I like it. I mean, I really like to see just uh, players bringing new things and bringing their own flavor to the game, and best of all, doing well with it. Yeah. So uh, great stuff from Doubleos, and uh, it's not only that he's playing it in a format that I think really punishes crazy stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's conquest with no bans. Where it's like you could reveal your deck yeah. and still have to win with it in that match. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. It's really risky. Really yeah. risky, but when it pays off, it's uh, it's some great Hearthstone. Yeah, it's definitely fun to watch. A lot better than. Uh... Yeah. The boring same old thing it, over and over the again. The tech so. cards didn't really even impact that match, but you know, let's say Oscock is stabilized. I, I yeah. think the Leroy power overwhelming would have won him the match. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Uh, it really gives you a huge. It makes you a huge favorite in the mirror match mm. well, because now, you just have that damage from hand. Now we don't. have him uh, playing the Druid again, and Oscock is aware of the Ancient of Wars. So. Yep. Does it really matter? It, it like, does. You, you just does. flick them when you're hand lock. Whatever. Uh, it's going to make him a lot more aware of how he spends his shadow flames yeah. and his owls. Yeah, mostly owls his owls. Sure. I think. Yeah, 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 right. And we did see two owls from Askaka. Yeah, because sometimes Handlock against uh, Druid tries to go with like some sort of like tempo play with like owling a watcher. Oh yeah, or something like that. But... And I think he's not as afraid of dying. You know, like you said, maybe there's that 1x oh, we have um, We have Sylvanas and Druid, too. That's kind of interesting. I don't think we saw that, did we? We didn't see it, yeah, but I don't think standard. it's too... With the two Ancient too Wars and with the combos? Yeah, you definitely yeah. put it in the slower one. Mm -hmm. Sylvanas is, like, very staple. Innervate Shade is really good against Warlock, though. Yeah. You can get it up to, like, a 7-7 seven, seven mm -hmm. before they can really Shadow Flame it off. Of course, you that do doesn't have sound to, so good. You do have to attack with <laughs> you it. You right. seven, seven, and then well, get you're, you're shadow flame lethal yeah. the whole time. Yeah. So as long as he draws, he actually decided not to do it though. Just gonna decide to curve out. I think he would have if he drew wild growth. Yeah. yeah. Or if he just didn't draw the ancient of lore. Yeah. His hand. I think he realizes his deck is really heavy on mana cost. He's yeah. gonna need to curve out better. I like holding innervates till later game against handlock most of the time anyway. Yeah. Just like being able to have surprise combos and things like that is really effective against Handlock. Yep. You can play a zombie chow. No. No, you just tap. It kills actually nothing. You can play it next turn while yeah, you tap. Yeah, you can play it next turn. It kills that one armor. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Maybe two. Nah. Probably <laughs> shade. 
You could always innervate the hero power. Yeah. You yeah. could innervate oh, swipe. Here we, here we go with the uh, with the card. The mind games. Card it's almost at the point where you know if Double O's is hovering over his cards and taking a while, he only has one play. The funniest <laughs> thing is whenever whenever I play Hearthstone and I see my players do this, they just go through all their cards. I feel like they're actually reading them, and I know they suck. So I, I play like just really dumb stuff, and oh, usually man. actually capitalize on that. It just that's, reminds me of that. That's a fun game to play. Okay, so what he was doing there was considering innervating swipe, and he was like, "What oh, swipe okay. do? Yeah, four damage one. That sounds terrible. <laughs> Does it? But the shade only gets three. Yeah, it's, it's more, one more damage. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Gotta consider it. Gotta consider it. Do you? He did. He did. <laughs> this actually sucks. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, power pass is not the not the greatest turn. Yeah, you really don't want to kill the Chow no, yet. You can kill the Chow next turn. Like, right. you'd still gain the life back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and how about that? That is two armor. Wow. The Chow will get the two armor, yep. preparing the profit. Yep. No four drop for Askaka. It's really unfortunate. Has to feel bad. Really devastating. The deck's like designed to like always get a four drop on four. Yep, that is the one thing they really want. Oh, the Belcher's okay though. Yeah, but you have to spin the coin, and then you don't have much else going for you. you like can't, you can't play nothing. Though. You know what you want to do is life tap to yeah. draw into more, but you can't. obviously you have to play something. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're probably gonna see either Coin Belcher. I won. Probably. I, I, it's that or Sun Fury. Nothing. Yeah. Which, I mean, <laughs> talking of bad plays, that seems a little worse. Yeah. Well, he thought a lot about this. Really reconsidering all the decisions he's ever made in life. Ah, big game hunter. I think he, he assumes his opponent doesn't run. Uh, Rag or Boom, because he has the Ancient Wars in there? I think Rag is a good assumption he doesn't run. Boom might still be in the deck. Yeah, Boom probably is. But uh, Ancient matter. Wars are often seen in, like, no big game hunter target deck. This is a super easy keeper, isn't it? No. Oh, yeah, you want it for the Drakes. Yeah, the Drakes. Drakes and Taunts for drakes pushing for lethal. Problem. I think what would have been funny here is Innervate Boom. Mm -hmm. Right after the PGH. <laughs> that would have been brutal. Oh. Yeah, he's definitely gonna kill that two three. Yeah. Gonna see what he gets first. Not so great. I think uh just Drew the Drew the Claw was decent though. Yeah. Drew the Claw, maybe even just charge the zombie chow. It would just really keep the shade concealed. Me if he kept the shade concealed here. Because his uh wow. Ancient Lord dies on board. The Ancient Lord dies on board and also like Shadow Flame here? Well, yeah, but it's Shadow Flame gotcha. isn't bad. That's what he's doing. Yeah, it's not that bad. It, it really it pulls it, but... Yeah, but you know your opponent had nothing. So why give him something? I guess. Like, Oskaka's just looking for a reason to play cards. Yeah. True. That like, aspect is absolutely true, yeah. It wasn't really, like, the most valuable Shadow Flame, though, because, like, he played Ancient Allure. Right, but he got to cycle Mortal Coil. He got to keep a board clear. He's at high health. I think the more you do this game of where you pick cards out of your hand and play one after a while, the less effective it is. Yeah. What? This guy's like, how many good cards does he have when he actually plays Drew to the Con? Six Wait, mana. Yeah. Well, the BGH pretty unfortunate since Boom probably going to come down soon. You mean now? Yeah, probably. Hmm. Could see Sylvanas. Nope. Yeah, I like Boom. Yeah, me too. Alright. Swipe big game hunter. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be attack first though, because you might lose that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Back face, swipe, chow. Actually, no, it's. Let's read what Sludge Belcher does. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Gotta rope that big game hunter. Nah. Gonna end our misery, it looks like. Alright. And. 
We didn't actually read what any of the cards did. Wow. Wow. The the that is the worst, worst income. <laughs> yeah. Out of all of the <laughs> outcomes. Worst outcome, yeah. No, and like hitting for at least like three on that Druidal Claw was really relevant. Double yeah, is like, Hellfire. man, Jockey Group sucks. <laughs> Good thing I don't have him in here. Yeah. yeah, that card was like, pay seven mana, deal two to your opponent. Lepernome does that for one. <laughs> So as Oskaka here, what do you do? <laughs> you cry a little. <laughs> sure, after you're done crying, is it maybe, do you try and taunt up a giant, or do you play Sylvanas? Because you gotta be kind of yeah. afraid of dying pretty soon. Well, you got big game once, it's really like you get big game again. You know, you know Doublest is playing mm -hmm. a lot of like weird stuff, so he's not gonna be able to play two BGHs. Mm -hmm. So giant's gonna stick. I think anytime you know a giant's gonna stick, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to see the giant come out in some way here. I, I kind of like giant ancient watcher. Well, I feel like one play you might have to do here is start tapping. Uh, as yeah, well. the tap giant sun fury. Tap giant and a two drop. I He's gonna go with the Sylvanas. You Sylvana basically stuff. have to completely disrespect combo pretty soon. And one of the cards Oskaka really needs to draw into would be like a molten giant. Well, he's got hmm. two keepers, so he has ways to deal with the Sylvanas' effect, but he can't really develop behind it, so it feels kind of gross. Yeah. It's not really a creature you want to leave up against Handlock, though. Could do something like Lotheb. I must save God. Yeah, and then he Put him at have... 15. Gotcha. Yeah, that wouldn't be bad, because then he doesn't have any ways to, like, practically use the and, Sylvanas. Yeah, thing. and then you use the keeper next turn to silence off the... I think, I think this play is just very standard, very solid, though. Yeah, yeah, just going the safest way. Because, like, if you Lothab, like, crazy things yeah. can happen yeah. still. He's not even going to attack. Just that afraid of Molten's. He knows he can't end the game. Mm. And this could telegraph to Oskaka. Well, it can telegraph one of two things. He has combo, and he realizes he doesn't need any extra damage. Yeah. Or he doesn't have any pieces of combo. He's not even we're, close to We're starting to, to realize there's probably one piece of combo in there. There probably is, yeah. With this it's obviously draws. very likely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think he drew twice off of lore, and that's been it so far. So two more draws than normal. But I know that a lot of a lot of games are lost in making suboptimal plays around combo when maybe your only way to win was to completely disrespect it. Yeah. I know I've lost games like that before. Yeah, but what do you do here? I like the Belcher because it sets up a very nice Hellfire on the board. Yeah. Then Hellfire, you're still behind so though, right? Well, no, if you do Belcher, Giant. You can't you're gonna do... taunt up a lot of stuff. Or just, no, just one. You can't do Belcher, Giant. You don't have no mana. Giant costs four. Yeah, the oh, Giant costs okay. four. Yeah. <laughs> Which goes back to him not tapping earlier. Mm-hmm. One piece of the combo piece is acquired. Yep. So maybe we might see him playing a little more aggressively. And it's a good piece. He's got. How much damage does he have actually? Thirteen on is his it? board state, because he'd have to silence off the watcher. Yeah. Is he gonna take down the giant? No, he's just putting the swipe damage there, putting everything but the giant. Yeah, kind of like that being you know, set up. Yeah. That's both swipes gone now. I mean, it does make Shadow Flame still playable, but then you do nothing. Yeah, you'd have to Shadow Flame the Giant. Yeah, I actually really like this because the 4-2 the taunt is just annoying. Yeah, really annoying. You can Hellfire here. I think you have to. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the play. It's just the same thing, basically, as Shadow Flame. Yep. Yeah, it's a little worse. You lose three more life. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a little better because it doesn't use your second Shadow Flame. Yeah, Shadow like, if you had the option, code. I think I'd Hellfire. Then you die to combo innervate. You do, but again, it's one of those things you're probably not going to beat long term anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've got Belcher Healbot coming up later. 
The only thing I really would have liked to see this game would have been a tap earlier, because it feels like this is going to be that a game that he's going to need a Molten, just have a, enough power to pressure well, the Druid. If he did tap earlier, then when he Hellfires here, he could be dead to the combo. Right. So. so he's definitely been playing around it a bit. And could come off the top at any time. Lore. That's a pretty good one. That's yeah, a that's a really good though. turn. So now the odds of combo increase and in Yeah, you have to mind. respect that, and that limits your options. However, not hitting him. Yeah, he's gonna leave him at fifteen. Still kind of afraid of Moltens. If he hits him, then he could like double molten taunt. There's no way he can beat that with his hand. Yeah, this kinda telegraphs that he does have that other inner bait. Which he doesn't, but... How so? Yeah, I uh, just think he's afraid of double Moltens. <laughs> that doesn't show the innervate. Uh, it kind of shows the innervate because if you don't put him to 14, mm -hmm. then he's out of combo range, essentially, but with innervate, he's still with Wow. Him. That's really risky. He does not it's care. It's just a tap and a rag, YOLO off the top, nails it. No BGH wow. from his opponent. He does not care about combo at all. Sylvanas, boys. Well... Like I said, I think the game would come to this. Yeah. So. Big risks, big rewards. Right. Sylvanas Shredder is uh, great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I like it. There is an owl. What? Um, Still? Yeah. Still pretty good. I wonder. I have no time for no. games. No. Yeah. It's good that Rag hit the 5-5. Five five. Actually, you could steal Rag if you had an inner bait. <laughs> you could rack yeah. and then keep her your own Sylvanas. Yeah. Sick. Which would be even terrible if, because yeah, you have no other that big good. game targets in your yep. deck. And we've seen good. some handlocks run double BGH in the tournament so far. Quite a mm -hmm. few. At least two that I remember. Right. Yeah. And it seems to be a good read. We've seen a lot of handlock. Yeah. Yeah. And BGH isn't a terrible card in handlock so anyway. Well, we know Owl's coming out here. Yeah. Yeah, BGH is okay. Like, it's, it's often a decent shot of flame, if anything. Mm hmm. And since most of the handlocks aren't running Siphon Soul anymore, it's good always just to have your one BGH when you need it. Mm -hmm. So running two increases the odds. <laughs> oh, and there it is. There it is. <laughs> yep. So I think the card he really wanted off that tap was Molten for one, and then Owl for two, and a five drop. So both players... Pretty unlucky on. I heard the owl that. happened, uh -oh. but I don't actually see the uh -oh. owl. Oh, uh, yeah, the owl happened and the rope is burning. We can hear. Uh oh. This guy is taking his headset off, yeah. talking to the admin. Yeah, it looks yeah. like we have, we uh, have an some unfortunate game technical crash. Difficulties. I think. Oh, man. I think this is maybe a bit unfortunate for Double Os. Yeah. I think Double Os was in a good spot that game for that type of druid. Yeah, yeah. really good. But at the same time, I think you know if. If we did truly lose that game, then it'd probably have to be a remake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's still, it could still go any The game way. state wasn't entirely decided, so... Yeah, yeah what if combo's his last card and he just never <laughs> draws into it? Oh, look, you oh. got something there. Thank you. Why, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I mean, uh, I believe on, on a disconnect, uh, unless one player has lethal, they have to replay the match with the same classes. So yeah. we're about to see probably a restart of exactly that. Uh, and I don't think it's going to end as favorably for a double O's. Yeah. It's still a it's favorite still Druid deck. favored. Yeah, definitely still Druid favored, even but though it is the slower variant. That handlock draw was abysmal. Yeah. So he was able to really punish yeah. that handlock draw. But uh, we didn't see any Siphon Souls from Oskaka. Yeah, and the double big game actually hurts him because yeah. it seems like there there's are no, no targets. Yeah, right? there's no targets for so the far. big game hunters. And uh, no Siphon Souls means no, like, he can't just eat Ancient Wars. Yeah. He didn't actually draw the Ancient Wars last game. He drew nothing. <laughs> well, it's like, yeah, Ancient Wars is pretty good there. There's like two Ancient right. Wars. There's like combo piece, at wow. least one. Just terrible draws from everybody. Get it together. Yeah. yeah. Yep. All right. Well, uh, I think they're still uh, figuring a few things out there. Um, so, Doublos is actually on, on, on match point. Um, yep. Even if he does drop one, what does he have to uh, beat after the handlock? Patron Warrior. Patron Warrior. That's going to be harder. That's going to be really hard. Yeah. Or Control Warrior. We, we actually haven't seen the Warrior. Mm -hmm. Well, it but is, it's it probably is, Patron. It is your teammate. 
So maybe you spoiled. Well, something. he's not my teammate, but Rack's partner. Yeah, Rack's partner. <laughs> yeah, he's actually subbing for us in an event. So okay, as close as it teammate. gets to there teammate. You go. Yeah. All right. Um, how do you think Pat Patron Warrior does against that? Because uh, e even though Druid does quite awful against Patron Warrior, it does seem to be the big taunts that sometimes make the difference. I think the initial impression was Druid was favored, and then as people have kind of figured out more patron lists, patron play, patron's now the one that's kind of favored because Druid can't really deal with all the patrons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the big taunts can help, of course, very weak to execute, so I think it all comes down to kind of the big battle rage turns and just drawing a ton of your deck to make sure you have the answers. That really seems to be the the key, because if you don't draw cards, sometimes you have to use Execute on like just a mid-game creature just to stay in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's probably the idea, is he's trying to like pressure him with the mid-game creatures and trying to force the tempo Execute for the patron to stay in there. If the patron has kind of a clunky draw, then Ancient of War comes down and just seals the game out. Or the surprise factor of Ancient of War could have potentially gotten him a win, but now that's right. kind of out there already. Yeah, unfortunately for Double O's, uh, surprises are mostly out there, at least for mm -hmm. the crowd. Um, the funny thing is, um, Askaka didn't really experience much of the surprise factors. Like, they were held back in most of these games. Askaka yeah. has no idea yeah. about, yeah. like, any of them. Except for the Druid. War, yeah. Which, he, which is, is relevant. Yeah, Great. that's what he has <laughs> face. Yeah. Conquest format, man. Yeah, I think the Patron Druid kind of goes back to what Firebat was saying about the Rogue Druid matchup, where... Either the druid needs a really good start, or the warrior needs to draw dead. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the sum of the percentage of the druid wins. So I'd say it's warrior favored if, if Askaka can take game four. Yeah. yeah. In the general case, that is true, but I don't know. I, I feel like um, there's that added percentage where if you don't get that extra card draw, you have to burn executes early. And because it is that mm -hmm. type of druid deck, it's another win condition. Sure. Yeah. So better than average, I'd say. I don't know. I think the the other types types of druid though that have like the double combo have the ability to just race. Did uh, which this druid with only like less combo pieces probably one combo probably one combo. Wait, I just realized a lot less viability uh, racing. He never played a piece of the combo, did he? No, nope. not even one. So Askaka might just not respect it at all. He might think I mean, he's I think not that's what playing we're seeing, it. Actually, yeah, that's the rag play. Yeah, that makes sense. He thinks he just doesn't. Zero respect. respect he just doesn't combo. have it. Which is bad for Oscar. Yeah, really really bad. Bad. <laughs> Just being in the dark against that. So like he's gonna be like happy. He's gonna be thinking like, okay, you know, yeah. now I know it doesn't have combo. I can just tap all I want. Mm -hmm. Don't need a taunt here. Mm -hmm. Just Yolo reg. <laughs> <laughs> right now, uh, we're just having. I believe the referees check if it is going to be a regame. They're just uh, checking the state of the board there. Uh, I I believe it is going to be a regame. I, I, I would so. hope so. I would yeah. hope so as yeah. well. It makes sense. Yeah. Unfortunate that there was a disconnect, though. Yeah, yeah it, it does. It does tend to happen every now and then, though. It's mm -hmm. not. It's, it's not, not uncommon. <laughs> it's not too uncommon, no. Yeah. Mm. All right. Um. So this is uh, the the second match of this group. Um. It's gonna be the winner of this is gonna face Roger. Yeah. Yeah. And and loser faces Rainad. Hmm. Okay. Well, the regame has been confirmed. Uh, I believe the players will uh, get to that shortly. So, right. is Roger watching this? Is he able to like see, or is it kind of like? I hope so, because that's yeah. a lot of information you might be missing otherwise. But I mean, I think I think Roger is. All uh, players are allowed to watch. Okay. Absolutely. So, but uh, also, Roger's probably one of the players that you know this means to the him. Most, yeah. yeah, it means probably one of the most to him, and uh, I'd, I'd imagine he has. He has eyes on what's going on. I think yeah. despite all of Roger's great finishes, has he actually won an event yet? No, I think no. he's had a lot of second and third places. Second, third. But it is yeah. it is a card game. I think um, in a lot of card games, uh, often that is respected more. Right. It yeah. is it is very well respected among pros. Just but placing for him well, personally, just placing well is a really big yeah. deal. If consistency is like very high valued among mm -hmm. pros, whereas like just winning one tournament. Like people don't respect you as much for that as just getting second and third a bunch. Yeah. But the general public loves people that win things. Yeah. Well, they want it is still it's really nice to win. Yeah. He must be the best player ever. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. That's how it is for most games. Well, yeah. Rogers racked up more BlizzCon points than people that have won an event. Yeah. In terms just of BlizzCon points, we, we talked about that a little bit. Um, we got the rules here. <laughs> okay. 
Well, let's let's read this. Judge Crip. If either player disconnects from the game due to technical reasons, the following rule will be used. Lethal on board or hand that turn equals a win to the player with 100% lethal. If a player does not have 100% lethal, it will be a rematch. And I don't believe yeah. there was a 100% lethal situation. There was there. not even a lethal situation. Wait, so, so what if there's a no. taunted up piloted shredder? Is that just... Like, you have lethal, but you have to get through this taunted up piloted shredder, which has, like, some percent chance to make it Well, that, that wouldn't be 100%. That's not 100%. So it's, uh, that's a regame? Yeah. That's a regame. That would feel awful. <laughs> that would feel really bad. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I mean, it, the, the thing is, I mean, you're talking about, like, a kind of bad, but you also have to keep in mind, like, the doomsayer situation of things, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Like, you have, like, a million creatures on board with, like, two savage roars. There's, like, no way your opponent's going to survive. And then he disconnects before finding out like what the wrath would have ended up the shredder. Yeah, like there's, there's, there's much higher extremes to being disgruntled in that in that ruling. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway, back to the BlizzCon points. We were mentioning that. Uh, yeah, in fact, Roger has uh, some of the most. Yeah, I think especially in his region, around 160. Yeah, wild growth is a really good start wow. for the druid. A big game hunter, also amazing. I think you just keep keeper. that. I think you and just keeper. Four keep. No, he he three captain Mulligan into the big game. Oh, he hunter. did. I missed yeah. that. I missed the start. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's really really good. He's got all the answers he needs to take this game. That's insane. Well, Scott has the four drop this time though. Yeah, but I think I'd rather have no fours and him have nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and you got the ancient lore. Like you're not even running out of cards. Yeah. I mean, this card good this just got better. Be I think this this hand is like one innervate short of perfect. And like we talked about, the double big game hunter not doing much here against this druid. Yeah, no big game hunter targets was a pretty good choice. Big game. I think you just keep tapping. Tappy? Yeah, I yeah, gotta find something more. Is this hand's not gonna do it on its own? Oh, there's the innervate we just talked wow. about. <laughs> okay, <laughs> excellent. Can you get any better? I think Tharson would have been better. If you could innervate Tharson this turn. That would have been pretty good. That would have been the only thing that would have, been, would have made this oh, hand better than what it was. <laughs> you didn't have the innervate Tharson. Never lucky. Never. Yeah, after the wild growth. Yeah. Wild growth would innervate Tharson. You didn't yeah. have that. Why well, even play Hurts, though? Right. So I think we're going to see Coin Hero Power. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Good Wrath, but I... I don't know. Cycling Wrath. Does your hand really need to get that much better? Yeah, you're gonna draw some cards. Savage Roar. I wonder if Doubleos has paid attention to the fact that he has not revealed any combo pieces. It uh, seems like he doesn't. Probably not. Yeah, because yeah. he was playing around mountains and stuff. It, it's hard to like, remember these very small things mm -hmm. when it's your first live event, like, right. as far as I know, ever. <laughs> In Hearthstone, at least. Yeah. I wonder. Yeah, you're mostly focused on just not screwing up play-wise. Right. Well, I think not screwing up will involve a sludge belcher here. Yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. I don't see. Could see Hellfire or Coil. Yeah, I like Belcher better personally. I don't know. Belcher sort of sets up your Hellfire, and then you can Hellfire. Right. Hellfire coil Dark Bomb or Hellfire Dark Bomb. Sure. Yeah, he's gonna go with the Hellfire Coil. Okay. That can do some damage. That uh, is scary. So, he's got an Innervate. He's got a combo piece. He's got oh another combo God. piece. He can combo next turn. He could literally For just lethal. hero power this turn. For lethal. For lethal. I think he'll do it. I think he's just gonna go slow. I think you can swipe face if you want to speed up a little bit. No. Yeah, you gotta be afraid of Molten, so. Yeah, and that telegraph's pretty hard. What, yeah, what you're trying on. to do. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the only problem here is despite us, Kaka, maybe not thinking he plays combo, mm -hmm. he's a smart guy. When Can you, you be hero, that smart? Like, you gave no credit for combo, like, when five you minutes ago. Power yeah, you just now it has to be an it. innervate combo? Yeah, yeah. Right, but a hero power passed on, yeah, you're on just, six. Yeah, like, Ancient of War, yeah, Ancient of War, Ancient of War, Ancient of War. Ancient Ancient of War. Yeah. All right, I guess he's. I guess he's, he's dead. dead then. Yeah. <laughs> How do you not emperor here? Yeah, you have to emperor, yeah, and then emperor. you're dead. The emperor's he's dead. If he's belchers, he's alive though, right? Yeah. 
Emperor. Yeah, he, oh, he's going for it. Poor Oskaka. He has oh to do this. God. He doesn't think he runs combo. He has to do That's this. That's so punishing. Wow. Like, his hand would have been better without Emperor. Look at Dumbo. Double he's like, is wow. Hyped. Absolutely wrecked, dude. I want to see Oskaka if we can actually get some emotion out of this guy. A lot of blinks. I guess, I guess the blinks are the salt. Nine damage! Yeah, he's blinking a lot. <laughs> Exactly. Three. Wow. That was yeah. that was barely believable. Man, those ancient wars, even after they were discovered. Yeah, those ancient wars killed them again. Those yeah. ancient wars. Yeah, ancient wars led to him winning this game because he yeah. made him think he didn't have combo. Wow. Yeah. That was strange. That was really incredible. Yeah. So Crypty, you, you think he's salty? Uh I don't he know. He might have a little salt in him. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe, maybe. maybe. Uh, we will see the uh, the winners face off against each other uh, here shortly, and then the losers shortly after that. So it is it is going to be Roger versus Doubleos. Yep. Certainly looking forward to that. It's two players who brought semi standard decks with some flavor. Yeah, and uh, Doubleos, like I said, kind of the underdog of the group into the winners match. One more, and he's that was the, really outstanding though through the quarterfinals. Yeah. It was really outstanding. Yeah. Some conservative play early on, but at the same time, the choices he made with the cards, I think, really paid off. Kind of strange how, like, the flavor helped him in that last match by... A lot? Yeah, yeah a leading lot. him off, yeah. the, off the path of combo. Um, also, I mean, that, that Shredder drop was pretty insane. Yeah. Mana Addict. I don't think it actually mattered, combo. but it was pretty cool. It was pretty yeah. cool. It was pretty cool. Absolutely. Well, um, I believe we are going to have... Uh, a winner's interview here in a second, and we'll get to see um, what Double Ose will have to say. Um, what do you guys think? You guys think you might might change up your Druid decks from now on? Maybe see some some ladder double Ancient Wars. Problem with Ancient Wars is when it catches on, it definitely has some hard counters. Catches off yeah. immediately. Yeah. yeah. Everybody throws in Black Knight for like an hour. And yeah. then uh, there's no more Ancient Wars. <laughs> yeah. Because that has got to be one of the worst feelings ever. But yeah. the weird thing about that is, like, the only way to beat like them black knighting your ancient war is, I guess, to play another ancient war. Yeah. For them not to have. <laughs> I know an you mentioned that. that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, the old the old way was you tried to bait it with your sunwalker. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because getting your sunwalker black knight, oh, who cares? <laughs> you got this ancient war. Yeah. All right. Well, I think I think Frodan is ready to uh, have a few questions for a double os, and I'm quite eager to hear the answer. So let's get to that. Thank you so much, Crip. I'm joined by W. Lose on stage for the winner's interview here. So in Group C, people were pegging three players as the ones to watch, and they didn't really pay too much attention to the W. Lose guy who was in the corner there. But you came in as a dark horse, and you beat Oskaka 3-1 with some pretty cool plays and some cool decks. So uh, let's just talk about and getting to know you a little bit better here. Uh, what, what, do you th what inspired you to bring some of the decks that you have today here? Uh, I consider myself a deck builder more than anything and these are uh, lists that I built along with my teammates and have practiced and played a lot over the last month or so um, ever since uh, Blackwing came out I've done a lot of experimenting with cards uh, I don't want to say too much but uh, Emperor allows so much that uh, deck building has become fun and different again so with that strategy I just brought a lineup that I'm comfortable with, and uh, it performed well, it seemed, so. Yeah, 3-1 victory is pretty comfortable margin here, considering that uh, you're able to take it. And now you have an interesting match up against Roger, who's known as a standard guy. You know, people are saying that in Taiwan, they play run-of-the-mill common decks, but they play them very well. So you're going to come in as the unique, weird, funky guy compared to the person who's normally playing all these kinds of standard decks. How do you think you match up against that? Is that exactly what you want? I mean, I don't want to play anyone in this group. Uh, I have so much respect for Skaka and Roger and Reynad. It's uh, insane. And I knew I was the underdog because no one knows me, and that's, that's cool and that's fair. Uh, that's to my advantage. So I'm having fun with it. Uh, if I can pull off a win against Roger and Skaka in one day, then I'm pretty happy. One step at a time until the round of eight. So I guess you're going to go up against Roger. We don't want to take too much of your time because we recognize you have to go to your match almost immediately. And so we are going to end this here. In the meantime, we're going to pass it over to Crip, who has lead paint on the couch, ready for a few words before our next match. 
Thank you, Froden. Here with Lead Paint. Uh, pretty interesting Hearthstone games today so far. Uh, I actually think uh, that last game probably takes the cake for my f favorite match of the tournament so far. Just the surprise factor, the the weird cards making the match even more weird. Uh, does that does that happen to you very much? You know, having to qualify through brackets, do you see many like uh, techie cards, that kind of stuff, or do you see mostly the standard? Um, well, there's always. Uh great surprise factor like whenever i brought the malagos warlock i don't think people were expecting that and i think that certainly helps especially in your first round because your opponent's not going to know your decks so i think that's a really solid choice do you think it's a uh, downhill from here for double os with uh, the surprises basically completely gone throughout every single deck we saw well uh there were still a couple of cards that uh us, Kaka didn't see. Wait, he can't. They're actually not going to be able to play each other now, right? But right. So it's it's not about us, Kaka. It's about the future of of Double Os because oh, yeah. every single flavor was was revealed in the stream. Well, uh, maybe maybe he'll play someone who didn't see some of the secret ch uh, tech choices, especially the the little flavor choice in his hunter deck. So there's still hope for that. Yes, yeah, so some hope for that, and uh, I'd say some hope for some amazing games still. Um, we are going to see. Uh, him face off against Roger here in a second. Um, before that, maybe maybe you can give us some predictions. What do you think is going to go down? Um, I think anybody could take it. Both of them are great players. They all seem like friendly dudes, and I'm happy with whoever wins. Someone has to win. Come on. I, I like to see the uh, I like to see the fun decks, and I think Double O's has more fun decks. So I'm I'm rooting for him. All right. But before, before we get into that match, we are going to go to a quick commercial break, and then we'll get to see the epicness once again.